Last time on Square Roots. I'm just kidding. There is no last time. April Fool's suckers. Wow. This is not... This doesn't come out on April Fool's. We're recording it on April Fool's. I fooled you. That's... I don't feel fooled. Johnny, do you feel fooled? I'm just confused. I feel betrayed. It's not April Betrays. Is it, Vanessa? <laughs> April Betrays. <laughs> <laughs> Happy April betrayal. <laughs> I was the one who killed your wife. I'm the spy. I'm the spy. <laughs> <laughs> I would like April Fools a lot more if it was April Betrayal. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Square Roots Podcast. My name is Matthew Van Zant, and I'm your host for this episode. I'm joined, of course, by everybody's best friend, Johnny Limberry Brandon. I'm the Marquis de Limberry. Uh, and of course, we're also joined, as always, by everyone's other best friend, Vanessa. No, we're not. April Fools, we are. I'm here. Oh. I got you oh, again. You got <laughs> me again. Vanessa's just full of tricks today. She she's a she's a trickster. This is part five of our Final Fantasy Tactics playthrough. Mm -hmm. Uh our penultimate episode, I mm -hmm. guess. Is that yeah. right? I find that hard to believe. I feel like there's a lot of game left here. Is there though? I don't know. We'll find out. Anyway. <laughs> Well, like eight times in the series, we've said we're playing to one place and then have changed our mind. So mm -hmm. that's true. if it is the penultimate or the penultimate penultimate episode, Pen penultimate. Mm -hmm. what's the word for the penultimate penultimate? Surely there's a word. It's the ultimate Pen or penultimate, penultimate episode. The, the pre-ultimate? Oh, right. uh, uh, so, uh, pen pen ultimate. Like post post script. Anyway, mm -hmm. um... Postscript script. When I clapped to sync this podcast, my cat thought I was mad and ran away. Aww. Oh, well, good. I don't like that cat. Um, what? Wow. Before we get into that our April Final Fantasy tactics coverage, we got to talk about the biggest, hottest news of the week. That's right. Welcome to the slap, ladies and gentlemen. No, slap, there is slap, no slap, 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 slap talk slap, slap, on slap, this slap. podcast. I refuse to engage slap. in slap talk. All right. I, I don't talking. care about That's slap. Fine. fine. Unless All I'm trying to talk about is how E3 slapped our expectations <sighs> down by canceling this year's event, mm -hmm. both online and physical. Did we talk about what we do slap. on this podcast? What do we do on this podcast? Slaps. What do, do you guys? We all, what do you think? What do you guys think about E three slapping us all down and not? You're supposed to talk about how this is why we need Jim. Jim mm -hmm. always every week forgets <laughs> to say what we do on the show, but we remind him. I said that. Mm -hmm. You didn't. I talked about. I named the episode number in the series, Vanessa. Ooh. I think I did it. Okay. Okay. Actually, I think she's right. I don't think I did. You didn't do it. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't, Vanessa. Why don't you do it for me? Just to be safe. This is a show where we talk about uh, all of your latest pop culture news from the glamorous world of Hollywood. April <laughs> Fools. It's not. It's, it's, it's just us. We talk about your favorite RPGs one chunker at a time. It's like a book club. One chunker at a time. But for your it's like a book ear club. head. And the first thing that we talk about is hot gaming news. In this case, we're going to talk about how E3 slapped our expectations and is no longer holding an event this year. Mm -hmm. Vanessa, your reactions. Well, they had already canceled their in-person event. And of course, for years now, people have been saying that E3 is dying. E3, of course, used to be an industry-only event. Then it opened itself up to the public, and uh, for many years it was the only place where game companies could go to showcase their latest work and, you know, get access to game journalists and all of that stuff. However, in this digital age, 
they can showcase it whenever they want, and they do. You you ever heard of Sony State of Play? You ever heard of Nintendo Direct? You ever heard of Microsoft doing something also like that? Well, they do. Mm. Do they? Isn't theirs just E3? Aren't they like, the only ones that do it now? Cause Microsoft it's... has their, like, Xbox spotlight thing. Yeah. Why would you not just do it yourself? Why would you pay to be part of this marketing event that, frankly, most people find distasteful? Yeah, there's that. And then also... Um, pandemic happened? Pandemic happened. So that made a big difference. And many games... Uh, perhaps most games that are announced by AAA Studios uh, are not released when they initially say that they're going to be. So it kind of turns into a thing of like every year they say like, oh yeah, we got it. It's, it's ready. It's all done. We're taking it out of the oven now. And then they take it out and they poke it with a toothpick and it's still liquid in the middle. And they're like, oopsie mm-hmm. doopsie, back into the oven. We'll see you it's in five raw. years. And, you know, who wants to stand in line to play a demo of a video game when you can just download it to your phone and play it on there? What? Phone? I wouldn't play a game on the... How can you play a game on a telephone, Vanessa? Oh, uh, you can play great games on telephones. Uh, You can play uh, Phone a Friend. Mm -hmm. You can play... Telephone, the the classic kids game. (laughs) The classic telephone game, Telephone. Mm Mm-hmm. You can play current time. Do you think there's still a number that you can call to get the current time? Yes. Wait, hang on. You were talking about something and then I got distracted. E3. I had a great Vanessa point was wanted. talking about E3. Why do we E3. need to go to E3 when we have telephones? Why do people go to E3? Uh, also, video games have some sort of presence, from what I understand, at Comic-Con. So these events become a little bit redundant. That's also true. And there's packs. You know what? Uh, we agree, and that's why we would never accept an invitation to E3. We're too good for it. Moving on. <laughs> Wait, when's if it was all expenses paid? Johnny, take us to the floor of the game journalist headquarters and get a reaction from the game news journalists out there about this decision. Uh, here we are at uh, IGN headquarters. Oh, oh, there's uh, Fred Bad Decisions. Uh, what? Hey, Fred Bad Decisions. What do you think about uh, the cancellation of E3? Cool, blimey! <laughs> Fred... I can't believe they've canceled E3. That's where I get most of my meal tickets, eh? I was gonna take my dick out this year on the show. I mean, uh... I was going to record in the bathroom. I mean, uh, Fred. I can't socks on the crowd. <laughs> Fred, Ooh. bad decisions. We told you before, you can't harass the ladies at the booths. They uh, are paid to be there as models. They aren't there to see your penis. They're not prostitutes. Oh, cool, blimey. I like to go back to the days when we called them booth babes and objectifying them was the point. <laughs> I love yeah. how that those days are like five years ago. <laughs> what does the crowd have to say to Fred Bad Decisions uh, uh, love of booth babes? Uh, pay to play sucks. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. NTF suck. I'm a video game crowd. Boo. Oh, uh, we also Pixel have boobs. Pixel uh, boobs. We also have La- Lady Real Gamer here, uh, one of the IGN's uh, lady journalists. You'll note that she is hiding from the crowd and uh, like covering her face so they don't see her because the crowd dislikes women. Uh, yeah, the crowd is very <laughs> anti-women. Uh, Listen to them growling out there. Lady <laughs> Real Gamer, <laughs> what do you? How do you feel about? the death of E3. Uh, I think it's great. I think anytime I can avoid being around um, male real gamers, it's a, it's a plus for me. Mm-hmm. Well, excellent. All right, Matt, that's our uh, live report from the floor of IGN. I'm embarrassed. Right. I'm embarrassed for us. I'm embarrassed for the listener. I'm embarrassed for I mean, IGN. I expected better out of all of you, to be honest. Uh, how about more hot gaming news? Does anybody have anything else that they want to... I do. Yeah. You know 
2022, the year of Breath of the Wild 2, is no longer. Breath of the Wild 2 oh, has been delayed until 2023. Boo. I mean, fine, I guess. Whatever. I wonder if it's to... I don't think it's going to be to coincide with the release of Super Switch, but... You never know. I imagine that they, I mean, uh, somebody put a chart together and like all but three Zelda games have been delayed. So this is not a shock. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's including from Zelda 2, there have been delays. So it's, right. this is not new. I'm just saying that, that like. But also, I think that, I just want to say, I think that, I mean, Horizon got murdered by releasing too close to Elden Ring. I can see, say, giving themselves another few months and getting further away from Elden Ring is probably not the worst idea. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe Elden Ring won't have staying power to dominate the conversation for months, but it may. Mm-hmm. It may. It might be one of those games that people just won't shut the fuck up about. Once if they're like, how do we get fingers into uh, Breath of the Wild 2? How do we get fingers into Breath of the Wild Need more too, fingers yeah. in this game. Needs more fingers. Fingers are so hot right now. <laughs> I'm still hoping that it'll let me play as Zelda. Like, I really want to be able to play as Zelda in, in not a... Uh, Dynasty Warriors fashion, you know? Yeah. Not, it doesn't have to be all Zelda. I'm not saying the game must be Zelda, but, like, some character swapping would be great. Mm-hmm. They've definitely done character swapping before. Why not just do it with Zelda, guys? Mm-hmm. People are demanding it. The Well, what I was thinking is, remember how Twilight Princess GameCube game delayed, 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 and then it was like a GameCube Wii game. And then yep, Breath of the yep, Wild. Yep, yep. And then the same thing happened with Breath of the Wild. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. So that that's why th- that's my only reason. I was like, well, they might be doing that. And then but my if my switch it... overheats when my son plays Fortnite on it now, so Oh no. I guess uh I'm gonna have to get a new one actually. So mm, if they're super out switch. One, yeah, if they're coming out with Super Switch, can they just fucking announce it already? Vanessa, do you have any uh hot gaming news? Yeah, I finished Taskmaster, and now my life is empty. Mm-hmm. Wow. I don't have anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's there's no there's no compass. There's no anchor. There's no land in sight. I'm just adrift. Some people might say, hey, Vanessa, the next season of Taskmaster starts like this week. Why don't you calm down about it? I'll tell you why. Because I'm not in the UK right now, and I can't watch the next season of Taskmaster until later. So, that's my hot gaming news. Okay. Taskmaster. Task Vanessa finished it. Master. That feels like something that might fit better into our next segment. That's right. Let's all talk about how we... Leveled up. Johnny. Mm-hmm. Hello. How did you level up? Uh, I went and saw a, a film at the cinema. Uh, I did sit in D-Box seats that are... T- Have you ever sat in a D-Box seat? Those things are the most uncomfortable chairs known to man. Yeah, I don't like them at all. They are like torture. I got one for Avengers Infinity War because it was the only thing left. And yeah. I was not thrilled. Well, I turned it down as it low as do. I could. It like swing around like you know one of those those things in Disneyland where you watch a movie and the chair like moves along with the film mm-hmm. a little bit. It's like that only less. And for a comedy, I saw the film Lost City, and for a comedy like yeah, that, based on with, the game that we played for the show. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yes that show game Lost City. That was Forgotten City. This one's a Lost City. Um, uh, anyway, it's it's a comedy with not that many action scenes. So most of the time the chair isn't doing anything. You forget about it. And then suddenly, whoop. Oh, right. But yeah, it was maybe two minutes of chair movement. Uh, but the thing was that it was as expensive to s- sit in a regular chair as it was to sit in the D-Box chair. So I was like, okay, well, I'll try the D-Box. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was all right. It was all right. That's my hot take on that. Here's a cold take for you that you just kind of made me think of. Remember when movie theaters were trying to do 3D really hard and how terrible and stupid that was? Thank God that's over. 
Is it over? I haven't. Uh, you can still watch 3D movies at the cinema, right? Avatar will definitely try to bring it back, right? Well, the, oh, like at, at theaters here, the, like all the Marvel movies are still released in 3D. I, I know when I was going to see Spider-Man, uh, I had to go book a regular ticket because I didn't really want to see it in 3D because it hurts my eyes. Yeah, I don't. I prefer not to see this the 3D. It makes the images uh, like shitty looking. Mm-hmm. And having it look like it's coming towards me does not make up for it. Anyway. Is that how you leveled up, John? Would you like to pass the reins on? Or do you uh, I'm say? trying to think if there's anything else I did. I've been playing more Elden Ring, but we'll, but we've talked about that. And um, have I done anything else exciting? Played some Tunic. Eh, it was all right. It's not really for me, I think. Oh, come on. I'm sorry. You have I, to get a little further into it. The, the, the guide is what really makes it fun, and that takes a minute to open up. Mm-hmm. And I did. It opens up. There's a lot more to it. Like you'll you'll start to realize there's a lot more. It's not as simple as it seems at first. Like a person, and when you get to know yeah. them, you think like, oh, this person is this kind of person. They're a jock. They're a nerd. They're an emo. They're Alan Tudyk. And then you get to know them and you're like, oh, they're opening up and they're multifaceted and interesting. And maybe I can't just put people into a little box. I mean, I can. Not a little box. It has to be like six feet long. No No way. You could fit a person in a box. It's like Tetris. (laughs) It's like the end of seven. (laughs) Why is it the box? Why does he sound like he's talking to a dog? I don't know. I never, got the, I never liked that movie, that movie very much, and awful. I never got the love for it. I never got awful it. Awful movie. Fuck never got Kevin it. Spacey awful. Awful movie. Actor. Fuck Kevin Spacey. Fuck all that. Fuck just the grotesque horrors that that movie decides mm-hmm. to inflict on its viewers. For but shock anyway, uh, I also I did do some racing in, online. I did a few online races, and the the so the uh, in Gran Turismo Seven. Uh, the online is like you have there's slots. They're like they'll be running races every half hour. Uh, so you got slots and then okay. you you like do a qualifying lap to get into the race. Uh, so you figure out what your pole position. It's really neat. Like, I don't know. I like that kind of stuff. And that and it gives you all these messages like, hey, uh, you get ranked on your driving behavior as well as how well you do in the races. So please don't hit other cars. It's sort of showing you how to pass cars without hitting them. Don't break in or don't like slam into a car to slow down. You know, all the things that you do in single player. And then I start. So I was like, okay, I'm going to be good. I want to get a good driver rating. And I start the game and just everybody just slams into each other immediately. Like I've never, I mean, obviously I'm in the bottom rank, but it's like, I can't win a race because I'm not slamming into people, but my driving rank's still bad because people are like brake checking me and stuff. Ah, I don't know. What I, a conundrum. Yeah, I think you have to be at least to get out of the the garbage tier. You have to be a little bit aggressive, and I'm a little nervous about that. But I want to get better. But I think I have to like slam into people. But then you get a bad rank, like good driving ranking. Mm-hmm. But everyone Can else you... is doing it. I don't understand. No, but I mean. You're the one who, when you finally reach your goal, you have to, like, decide, is it worth it to be here and know that I haven't behaved in a gentleman-like manner? But or, I can't win a race unless I do what every single other person in the game is doing. This is how society erodes, Johnny. <sighs> I, I guess. I mean, I can have a moral victory and stay in garbage tier forever racing with jerks. That's what you have to decide in this world. You have to decide, are you going to be ethical or are you going to be rich? Will I be ethical? Will yeah. I be rich? All right, Doris Day. Uh, so, Vanessa, <laughs> how did you level up? I watched Bridgerton season two. That's right. TV's sexiest show is back, and by TV I mean Netflix, and by sexiest I mean sexy adjacent with some nudity. Uh, Bridgerton Season 2, based on the second Bridgerton book, The Viscount Who Loved Me. This time it's Anthony Bridgerton who takes center stage as he woos the tempestuous Kate 
Ooh, wow. <laughs> You're really selling it. I love it. I wasn't. It's okay. You weren't selling it? It was it was okay. Oh. Um the first season I liked because it was just a bunch of dumb tropes. This one is also a bunch of dumb tropes, but in a way that I found more irritating. It's the sort of enemies to lovers kind of thing. And like many rom-coms, it gets to a point where the solution is just talk honestly to each other about your feelings and the characters refuse to do it for like three more episodes so you're just sitting there while they drag out like oh i can't be with this person because blah 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 well no, i can't be this this person because blah 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 you know it's boring uh but the actors are good the costumes are fun and funny not period accurate but amusing to see and a uh, fun fact I learned, the two characters that I find most interesting, young mm -hmm. Eloise and Penelope, are played by two of the oldest actresses in the series. So, huh. well, everyone around them, except for the mother-parent characters, are in their 20s or early 30s. They're both kind of early to mid-30s, but they play some of the youngest characters. Isn't that always the way of it? Always. Always the way. Mm -hmm. So that's Bridgerton. It's not a recommendation. But if you, you like seeing beautiful people like mm -hmm. seduce each other and then have sex, why not watch it? Mm -hmm. It's all relative to the size of the steeple. It's all relative to the size of the steeple. That's a, that's a kind of issue. You know, I mean... Uh, Bridgerton Bridgerton's not a steeple show. It's oh, more okay. of a a little a little peephole show, you know? Mm -hmm. Like you like your Cinemax, your you know, erotic thriller. Is it, is, it, Ooh. is it like a Cinemax? It has that much nudity? It has a lot of nudity. Uh this season had less nudity than the first season, I would say. But uh there was still a lot and Spoiler alert for the very end of the show. They sort of wrap everything up and then they're like, eh, let's throw in one more sex scene. So it cuts to like one year later. And it's just like <laughs> the characters having sex. And you're like, yep, there they are enjoying their sex life. Fun. I forgot to review Lost City, Vanessa. I got so derailed. You just got so about... into talking about the chair that you didn't talk about the film at all. We did a whole all. podcast about it. So, uh, it's good. I I think. Do you like Do you like uh romancing the stone style adventure comedy, romance? Are we in Vanessa's level up now? I know. I'm just asking Vanessa. Is it okay, Vanessa? If I review, yes, it's okay. Okay. I have never seen romancing the stone. Oh, what? it's fun. It might. Oh, you know what? With the with the proviso, I have not seen it in like 20 years. It may yeah, not have sure. aged well. I am guarantee you there are some racial stereotypes. Yeah, that are unpleasant to watch at this point. There, I loved *Romancing the Stone* growing up. We had that thing on VHS. I watched that thing all the time. It's like a a more romantic Indiana Jones. That's more relationship yeah. focused. I liked Indiana yeah, Jones. It was more modern. Indiana mm -hmm. Jones was romantic. Uh, John, <laughs> *Lost City* does I think look very good. I like Sandra Bullock mm -hmm. and a lot, and I like Channing Tatum. And I like uh, I like a romance in the stone style style romance action comedy. So yeah, I, I think it's very it's an eighties throwback. It's got Did you some, go see it? Yeah, I went to go see it at the theater. And if you like, if you like uh, Roger Moore style age differences, although Channing Tatum is older than I thought he was. I thought Channing Tatum was in his like mid thirties, but he's he's my age. Matt's age. Yeah, I think he is a little old. He broke out a little later. He was a little old. I think he played a little younger when he was a little older. Right, yeah, he's like he 40. Was, he was like 30 when he was first breaking out. He looked like he was like 20. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, and she is the same age as Roger Moore in A View to a Kill. And Roger Moore looked older than 57 in mm -hmm. A View to a Kill, and she looks much younger than 57 in this film. Okay, but a... 
age an age distance of that caliber was more acceptable. Right. And I back in the seventies or whatever than it is in the twenty twenties when it's like, uh, this is a kind of weird power imbalance. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you know, he's forty and she's fifty seven, so I don't think there's a power. I don't think he's gr- she's grooming a forty one year old. You know, <laughs> not it's not That's like Tawny Roberts who was like twenty something. And I mean, I'm forty one. If I wanted to date a fifty seven year old, I could. Yeah, nobody would stop me. No, and I don't I mean, think I'd anyone would stop myself. To be perfectly honest with you, because the seventeen year old age difference, and I would not want to date somebody that much older than me. Once she was looked like Sandra Bullock and was nice and oh, funny, wait, like is Sandra, she Bullock. Sandra Bullock. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, then yes, never mind. <laughs> so sorry, rich people live forever. That's a different thing. That's yes. a different question entirely. Yes, uh, and she's just really good in the role. I love an action comedy. Uh, it yeah, it's got some fun supporting cast. It does try to be a bit more self aware about the idea of tomb raiding than you know Indiana Jones. And there is commentary on it. There are indigenous people involved in the adventure a little bit. And uh, there's horny Oscar Nunez. So, Nunez. Is not Daniel Radcliffe in this movie? Yes, and he is the villain, and he is having a lot of fun. He makes a very good villain. There's many jokes about his size, and there's... One weird joke about how old Sandra Bullock is, that they, where they call her geriatric, is like, oof, really? She doesn't look geriatric. I mean, 57. <laughs> I, yeah, I guess. <laughs> Daniel Radcliffe is the villain, really. Boy, yeah. Like, you keep selling me on this movie. Like, I'm not going to go see it, but I'll when it, when it comes out yeah. on whatever, mm-hmm. I'll definitely watch go it. Go watch it. I think it would be a perfect rainy day, you know, on Netflix. You'd cuddle it up with a pet or a child or a friend. Or a loved one, you know, uh, go nuts. Are I think you it's, implying it's good. that you do not love your pet, child, or friend? Uh, uh, my, I just scared away my pet by clapping. So, mm. which one of you will go see Morpheus in the theater? Not I. One, two, three, not it. Not it. I guess it's Jim. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's so. probably where he is now. Yeah, he is probably, probably going. Is. It, there was ads for it, and I thought it was a uh, April Fool's joke that there's this. <laughs> so, why is it a Marvel film that isn't badged with all? Is it a Sony Marvel film? Is it yes, like a Sp- It's a Sony oh, film. Oh, yeah, okay. it's a Sony. It's like car. It's like Venom. Okay, it's not really technically part of the Marvel verse, but I guess now it's part of the Marvel multiverse. Yeah, because Venom. Yeah. Did y'all read about the? Post credit scene. In Mor- no, I, did, in I saw that there was one, but I, I did not read about in Mo- it. Was it called tell, Mobius? Morpheus? In Mobius, I do want to tell you what it is. Morpheus. So, listeners, skip ahead if you don't want a spoiler for the Morpheus post credit scene. Listeners, so, are you ready? Skip ahead. Yep. You yep. Just, okay, she's about to start. Can I guess? Because my guess is that Michael Keaton shows up. That is right. Michael Keaton drops out of the sky, and he's like. What's up? I'm the vulture. I was sent to this universe by accident, and I want you to help me get revenge against Spider Man. And that's what? the end of that. So, is this part of the MCU or not part of the MCU? Technically, they're in a split off. They're like in the they're in the multiverse. They're okay. not in the MCU universe, but they are part of the that universe is part of the multiverse. That's where Michael Keaton came from. Now, is it? It's not where Michael Keaton came from. That's Michael Keaton came from the MCU universe, right? And has gotten stuck in that universe somehow. That has Venom and uh, Morpheus in it, mm-hmm. but no Spider-Man that we know of. That we know of. That's a good point. Oh, what a great! You know what? I'm I'm here for it. Let's. Bring in Morpheus and whatever they're planning next. Yeah, we won't watch them because they sound terrible. And then introduce that universe as Spider-Man, and it could be... Miles. Miles. I love Miles. Yeah. Miles is my favorite, so that would be great. All about it. Or Gwen. What Mm -hmm. about Gwen? What about Spider-Gwen? Why not both? Matt, in the the next 10 years, will there be a Marvel versus DC movie? No. Okay. Yeah, I... Don't see why Marvel would do that. 
Although um, it's too big now. These aren't small publishers. These aren't comic book publishers. Yeah. This is movie studios. It's too much. It's too big. Although now that Flash entering the Speed Force has been voted <laughs> by the Oscar viewing audience as the greatest movie moment of all time, you would think that every other filmmaker would be clamoring to get a piece of that action. Okay, well, I, I didn't crazy. actually watch the Oscars. What is that all about? What happened? It's, it was like a Twitter vote yeah, or something. They, but what's the, the speed force? It's the end of that Justice League cut, Snyder cut. If you didn't watch that, then you wouldn't know it. I did watch about, it. It is the end of that. He goes into the speed force. Remember the world blows up and then he runs so fast that he turns back time? Oh, I assume that was somebody miss like... Uh, someone misreading and calling it like misremembering Justice League as the Speed Force. No, it was the Speed Force is what the Flash taps into to for his powers. So why are people, travel, why is everyone riffing on the Speed Force? travel through time and across dimensions. Huh? Why is everyone making jokes about the Speed Force? Well, uh, because, because it was voted the best movie moment ever. Yeah. By for, for the fucking Oscars this year, which is crazy. It was from that terrible Zack Snyder Superman. The Oscars made... It's a decent moment. It's a good spot in the film. The Oscars made a category to try to get lay people interested. And they're like... Those kids interested, and the kids couldn't care less. And they're like, hey, this is how we can, like, acknowledge uh, Spider-Man No Way Home by having some categories that people can vote for, like, their favorite moment of the year or whatever. And... uh, We'll just have them, you know, vote, and I'm sure it will go fine. And then the Snyder fans came out, and they were like, Speed Force! We want Flash entering the Speed Force! And they worked together to make sure that they voted from as many Twitter accounts as possible to make Mm -hmm. Flash entering the Speed Force acknowledged. the least shocking thing I've ever heard. As the best movie moment of all time. Snyderverse fans who appear to be the most toxic group uh, in film fandom, and that includes Star Wars fans who are notorious. Mm-hmm. They also got um, a moment from World War Z nominated too, which is another Snyder. Isn't that true? Z is not no, it wasn't Snyder. World War Z. It was something else. What it's called? What oh, it's called? It his day. He did a Day of the Dead. There was right? that that remake. Yeah, there was the one that was set in Las Dawn Vegas that he did like the a new year ago. The one in Vegas. Yeah, yeah that, that was the Netflix movie. Yeah. It bad. I mean, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't good. Dave Batista was in it. Like yes, it. with Dave Batista. That's the that's the thing that was nominated. Ah, that's ridiculous. One of the Just other pathetic. greatest movie moments of all time. It's like to- toxic masculinity brought to life in this movement of propping this fucking mediocre director up. I like Zack Snyder's stuff, or at least some of it. Like, I think he's okay, but he can't tell a story to save his fucking life, and jamming everything with slow motion isn't fucking, like, style, you know? What about just slow motion. how he uses music to evoke mood? Oh, boy. I mean, yeah, he does, in the most ham-fisted way possible, but I can <laughs> still appreciate it. Like, I can still enjoy it. It's ham-fisted, but I can still enjoy it, but just, like... Come on. There's so much better stuff out there. There's, There's so many just better something directors sort of there. like skin flick about everything he does, too. You know, it's very it's very like, here's That's a lady. Why... Let's slow mo yeah. on her and look at this lady. It's not, he's not Michael Bay. It's not his. I don't agree with that, really. He's I mean, for sure. There's a lot of sexy shots, but he's not Michael Bay, like Did crawling up a woman. Not every... make sucker punch. He yeah. Make sucker punch. He did. I mean, make but sucker, sucker punch, punch was a really bad attempt at like a feminist narrative. Like he had good intentions there, even if he fails miserably. And that movie is God awful, but I don't think that he's, I don't think he's like a huge scumbag or anything, but I just don't think he's a great director. I think he would be great. They kept talking about this bat Ben Affleck, Batman versus Deathstroke movie. Just go let him do that. Let him do a crazy superhero movie. Just don't let it be the whole thing. You know, that's why I'm trying to bring the hashtag restore the gun verse uh, mm. to life because I want James Gunn to take over the whole thing. Come on, James Gunn Justice League. Let's do it. Right, guys? Right? Sure. I mean, I, Justice I'd be, League International, can we tone down the baby. Go- can we tone down the gore like just 10%? <laughs> 
Yeah. Uh, no, I think that if he moved into the, he toned it down for the Guardians movies. Oh, that's true. I think true. that if that's we moved true. into the, I think if he moved into the main main stuff, he could tone down the gore for sure. Anyway, this got way off base. Is John still leveling up? Yeah. John was about to talk about the future of the Justice League franchise, given the troubles of one of its stars, Ezra Miller. Go ahead, Johnny. Uh, Matthew, how did you level up? <laughs> uh, I would, I'll briefly talk about two shows that I, that I watched. Uh, the first one was The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, and I loved it. Everybody that I have heard talk about it, that's watched it, loved it. And so I watched it and I loved it. What can I say? Excuse me, but I've talked about it and I thought it was just okay. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm with Vanessa on it. that. I think it's delightful. Um, I think it starts off a little rough, like it's a slow burn, but the comedy stuff the that she does is fantastic, I think. And I think it does have a lot of like fun, funny stuff, but there's also like a lot of drama stuff that kind of drags. But uh Anyway, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. I watched all four seasons. I adore Why it. Why don't we go and be stand-up comics? We're funny people. People like to listen to us. Y'all ever done yeah. stand-up comedy? I mean, I'm a big fat guy, so I don't, like, I'm already, like, people look at me and they're like, dismiss. Um, I also want to uh, talk about a show that I watched called Barry. Has anybody watched Barry? No. No. Barry's an Barry's an LA show about an assassin played by Bill Hader, a hitman what? who decides to go straight uh, when he accidentally stumbles into an acting class, and it's about the fallout of him trying to go straight and him killing a lot of people. I thought it was about Henry Winkler. And on the other hand, it's about oh, it's not Henry Winkler, and it's about Henry Winkler and his acting class and them learning to act and putting on uh, plays and stuff. It's biz- this show can go from Bill Hader or a cup or Henry Winkler or somebody on stage, like doing a piece and like just putting on an acting clinic on this television show where you're just like, this is amazing. Like it's incredible. And then the next scene Barry has to murder a little girl's father, and she stabs him. It's wild. <laughs> it is buck fucking wild, but it's fantastic. It's so it's dark. not a spinoff of uh, Henry Winkler's character from Arrested Development, Barry. <clears throat> no, okay. Is it? Um, is it a spinoff of Henry Winkler's character from Royal Pains? Uh, well, I know I believe he is playing the Fonz, and <laughs> is he playing himself? Yeah, he's playing the Fonz. No, he plays a he plays an actor though, like a washed up actor who runs an acting class in L.A. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it's a it's a crazy show, and it's very violent and dark, and probably not for everybody. But and it took me several starts to watch it because it is so it's not cringy, but it's like it's dark. So, but once I managed to get into it, I had a good time with it. I like that Bill Hader. I might like it. <laughs> he absolutely just he's such a good actor, Vanessa. He just kills it. He can show you, you can watch that show and Bill Hader will teach you what good acting is oh. by watching him. By Like they're talking about acting, they're talking about the process of acting, but then you can watch Bill Hader turn it on and really see it happen and go like, holy shit, it's crazy. And then somebody's thumb gets blown off or something because it's nuts. Hasn't Henry Winkler won some awards for being in that show as well? Um, I don't know. I be- I believe it's award winning, but I didn't do my research before we did this. What a funny career uh, Vanessa, that man has had. You know. You know what? I think that he has just he's been over. He's been, you know, massively popular for so long that he just has been able to do what he wants, and for years, and he has continued to. He's got a nose for good projects, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, because this isn't his first. Thing or his second or his third, the man's been in a million things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's just like he's one of those actors who, where the Fonz wasn't really a f- 
fit like obviously iconic role yeah. and everything but not who you would like envision casting in that kind of part. shocking kind of shocking that he ever managed to break out of that i feel like an actor today would have a, a really hard time getting out of that role absolutely now. whereas i think that like character acting work is probably more where his skills lie from what i've seen or his just like natural talents um yeah but he sort of started in this weird leading man role with this crazy urkel like success of the character. Yeah. Oh, well, he's not really the leading man of Barry. Bill Hader is the leading man. Right, 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 right. But that's what I'm saying. Like, he sort of was out of the gates, this leading man guy. And I don't think that's ever really where he probably should have been to make the best use of his talent. Well, then, of course, he did movies, but I guess even that, he didn't have a bunch of, like... The only uh, he Henry Winkler kind of movie I, really... I can think of is The Faculty. Wasn't he in that? Or was that John Stewart? He's in Scre- that was he's John in Stewart. Scream, and he's yeah. in The Water Boy and Little Nicky, so he was kind of in that thing for a little while. All yeah. right. All right. Anyway, uh, Vanessa, have you leveled up yet? Yeah. No. Okay. Vanessa, I would like you, you <laughs> I would like Matt to tell me what I said I did in the level you up. Talked about Bridgerton. I'm amazed. You passed um, my test. My mom likes Bridgerton. I'm sure she does. Me and Molly. She you hasn't know. watched part two yet. I think Molly uh, will you know, find something to, to like that... if you know what I mean. Wink. Yeah, you and Molly would get along. Um I think that uh, Death of the Nile is on like Hulu, which is exciting. Oh, is it? Molly. I would like to watch that. Yeah, it's on that. HBO and Hulu, which is weird. Despite, you know, half the cast being. I know. And also, it's it's getting bad reviews, but I'm still going to watch it. I still want to see it. I like I like that stuff, man. <laughs> like Some of me. the liberty of streaming services is being like, you can just watch it, you know? It's not like yeah. going to the video store and you have to, like, get Death of the Nile and go up and the cashier's like, mm, look at this girl. I bet it's she's not going to get something to the cool. Theater. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, let's get into our uh, quest log, which, as you all know, this season we're calling the Durai Papers because we're nerds, I guess. I don't know why. It's mm-hmm. terrible. Oh. Uh, but... Uh... <laughs> Uh, last time, uh, since Vanessa failed to tell us, I guess what happened last time, we'll just kind of. Well, make it I thought that the save point last after time we fought God. Yeah, I thought the save point after was the end of the chapter, but I, this the, the the notes say that there's still a little bit more of chapter three. I don't know. Whatever. I didn't wa- I didn't look at this last time, so so this is new to me until you know for this chunker. Right. Well, I tried to talk about this last week, but Johnny said he had not played it. Yeah. Well, I and thought that so, it ended not, after you I killed... I wasn't on the show, so I don't know what happened. I thought it ended That's after you killed the dude. It's okay if it did, Johnny. Like, I don't mind. Okay. I'm not trying to correct you. I see what's upsetting you. In the notes, mm. I have put this first paragraph and then the heading chapter four afterwards. I'm just mm. going to go ahead and move. Here I go. I've taken oh. the heading and I'm gonna plunk. I plunked it right above this first. Oh, thank you. Event. So, yep. Now it's all in chapter four, and we don't mm-hmm. have to worry about whether or not it technically is. Yeah, uh, Vanessa actually has a. Uh, she's hooked up her old Xbox Connect to her computer, and she like can do air movements in order to re like highlight stuff and move it, just like in Minority Report. Yes. She very much looks like she's like she wants to look like she's on like a VR thing, mm-hmm. you know, like, like Tony she's Stark doing the Iron Man. With her hands, yeah, yeah. Or like the episode of Community, or that terrible Sherlock Holmes thing where he was going through all the words. Remember, dog, hound. Are you talking hound about corp. his mind palace? Uh, yes, that 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 uh, you're talking about the Hounds of Baskerville episode. Too, yes, which is not a very good episode. It is a ter- That is one of the worst sequences. It's one of the worst ones for this in any uh, Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> mm-hmm. All so, right. I wasn't on last time. But if you I guess were on a date says, and mm-hmm. someone referred to their own mind palace, would you give them a second date? No. 
uh, you know what? I can understand if it's there like, oh, I use the mind palace technique to in order to remember stuff. It's just my mnemonic way of remembering things. But if they're like yes. ostentatious about it, then no. Depends if they sort of see yeah, it as a tool. If somebody is like, this is, if they're humble about it, like, I know this seems silly and you've probably seen Sherlock, but it works for me. Then I would be like, that's cool. Like, no shame. Yeah. But if somebody was just like, if somebody was talking like, I entered my mind palace, I would definitely be like, get the fuck away from me forever. <laughs> All right, so uh, we last week we met Rafa and Merrick, and it was a whole deal. And Rafa joined the party with her terrible, terrible garbage magic that I hate. Um, this time, as we where we start off on the roof of Rio Vane's mm-hmm. Rio Vane's yep. castle, mm-hmm. and Rafa. Uh, does confront the Grand Duke, mm-hmm. and he maybe admits to having assaulted her mm-hmm. sexually. Mm-hmm. And that's not good. And this is what it takes for Merrick to finally realize that he has been fighting on the wrong side. And, of course, the Duke kills Merrick right as we show up. Mm-hmm. Uh, he does push, because and... the Duke got a gun, and Merrick does push uh rafa out of the way and takes the shot he takes the bullet right. and dies good for him mm-hmm. and then um we show up and the marquis marquis elmdor mm-hmm. he's a well real sephiroth his assassins he's a real sephiroth and he's got two assassin ladies with him like a sephiroth mm-hmm. celia and letty mm-hmm. and uh I have an end. Ramza, I don't know. Ramza Celia. realizes that Elmdor must be a Lukavi, which we know at this point, I think. We've definitely, if they haven't confirmed it in the cutscenes, they've been dancing around it. Yeah. Uh, the, this is the episode is, where they all stone. really talk about how great <clears throat> it is to be a Lukavi, what being a Lukavi means, how they how Lukavis work. There's a lot of Lukavi talk in this junker. Um, Elmdor and his servants attack, but when you, is it just any of them if you defeat, if you, or is it him? I think uh, it's... I got through this quick. I was beating Wait, I thought. These dudes. <laughs> Wait, what? When you fight Elmdor and his assassins here. Mm-hmm. I All think right. it's any of them because I was going to like play with them and, you know, try to level up <laughs> and things like that. And instead, mm-hmm. like I beat one of the dancer girls and. Then he was like, oh, no, run away. They are dancers, but they are, their title is assassin, their job is assassin. Nicely, thank you. kill the shit out of people. Uh, Anyway, um, Elmdor leaves, uh, but. He he boops out. I love the, I love the teleport booping. They're like, I know, it's great. They just, (laughs) uh. Elmdor, Elmdor leaves, and Rafa approaches her brother's body, and she's got the aura sight in her hand, mm-hmm. and it starts glowing, mm-hmm. and her brother's back to life. Rums oh, Rams is out. worried that it'll. He's like, yeah, Rams is worried that it's gonna take her over like it did everybody else, but instead it just kind of uh, brings Merrick back to life. Yeah, and he, does he's it break? like, I think it breaks. No, does it not break? No. But he's like, he's like, don't do it, don't do it, and she's like, I'm doing it, and then it, it's fine. It just like it was nice and good. Uh, my favorite thing about this battle is Celia. Once again, I, I'll say my aunt name was Celia. Uh, Celia comes, and en- her entrance is she jumps in, grabs ba- uh, Duke Barrington, who you think might be the big bad of the game, and then proceeds to throw him off of the castle, which is amazing. Yeet? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she yeets him. Vanessa, what did you think about that moment? I thought it was very satisfying. This was mm-hmm. not a good guy. He sucked, mm-hmm. and he deserved it, and I liked it. So Celia, a uh, new party member, right? She's going to join us. She's like girl power, her and, and Letty. Is that, that how it's going to work? Uh, Probably not. Oh. Damn it. They're cool. I like them. They yeet bad guys off of castles. I just so I never I never used any of these special characters. 
Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I don't think Celia and Letty ever become playable. I don't. I never defeated them though. Eh, anyway, we'll talk about that because all the fights with them in it is, are very strange and kind of work differently than normal fights. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, er- everyone's like, "Hey, the yeah, the I guess the the these Jolly Rancher Orosites can be used for good, or they can be used for evil, and they kind of like." take on like i think it's like we discussed in the last episode it's like the mask right mm-hmm. where you could be a good fun jim carrey mask or an evil whoever the guy was that was evil mask but when you think about it like jim carrey definitely did some things that were evil as the mask he did depending on bank. your definition of evil he robbed a bank and he also like made people do things as if they were under his control. He mm-hmm. made that woman sing Cuban Pete mm-hmm. and uh, do a dance and everything. Mm-hmm. And like, so, is that okay? Well, I mean, are you saying it's just like uh, David Tennant in Jessica Jones? Exactly. The mask was the kill grave of the mask. Ah, interesting. Interesting. So, uh, everyone now knows, uh, if you remember, Ryuvan's castle was just full of bodies. It was like Sephiroth went through there. Everyone was like, did Sephiroth do this? And they're like, no, it was this guy, Ramza. And across the whole world of Ivalis, uh, in every tavern, they call this the horror of Ryuvan's. And Mm -hmm. they say Ramza went through like a big murder kid. Or adult. I'm still unclear as how old he is. Yeah, he is like the most heretical heretic of all time. And mm-hmm. he just goes around killing people for no reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this uh, chapter four, In the Name of Love. Well, I know Orange what Ep- you're expecting me to do. You're expecting mm-hmm. me to be like one mm-hmm. man, something, a rather thing and some other guy does something else mm-hmm. and everybody yep. stands around the place and mm-hmm. and then we all get together and yell. Is this I, the I just... edge? The edge? Is that you? <laughs> it's me, the edge. <laughs> Famous Irish musician. <laughs> I'm here <laughs> with me with me best friend Bono. And the other loves guys. The earth. Bono, I know all of them. Bono. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mike Newton. <laughs> I don't know if that's real or Myself, not. Myself, The Edge. Mm-hmm. Mike D. And of course, Mike D. <laughs> There's two mics in, in, our, in uh, not REM, Vanessa, but YouTube. Vanessa, did you say that you don't use the special characters? I did. But do you, you used Orlando. No. He's really That's good. Insane. He's really good. <laughs> He's really fucking good. Why would I want to kick it one? It goes of... easy mode mm-hmm. after. But, you know, I've had I've spent all this time with my little friends leveling them up. They're and good. Playing with and the jobs. To like, you, you do have to fuck around with their jobs if you're going to use them. And that's not fun. I was using Agrius and trying to build her up as a chemist, but it was a real pain in the ass. I didn't even realize these special characters could change their jobs. They sure can. Yes. I changed. Uh, their job that has all the their powers in it is like their squire job. Oh, I see. I've been, uh, throughout this chunker for all the story fights, I brought in, uh, I, and I know I could equip this gun to any of my characters, but I, I like bringing in Mustadio. And uh, the gun, that gun I found from poaching, I think it was like a rare find because it it guarantee it's guaranteed to hit and is guaranteed to do between two hundred fifty six and three hundred twenty damage every time and I don't know why, wow. but, but it and makes it's like him stone. Yeah, it does start out with him being stoned every time and that you, seems easy enough to handle though. You yeah, know? you just have to make sure that you like. I always start him next to uh, my dancer who has uh, gold needles and she can like poke him with a little gold needle. Yeah. Yeah, by the end of this chunker, I had a dancer and a bard, and they were my 
they just they would just hang back, and my three core te- my core team of three Orlando Ramza and uh, my samurai or my monk slash whatever he is right now mm-hmm. he's a ninja now mm-hmm. uh, the ninja would just I don't know you know they get beefed up as they move across the map the other guys get slowed down and get their power sapped out of them and by the time my guys get there we're like it's so funny. <laughs> what was that song? You really, you really tear through. I've never really played it like this before, actually. So it's pretty, it's a little new for me to do it like this, where you really like, you cut down on your available manpower, but boy, you tear through the bad guys like fucking tissue paper. It's mm-hmm. fun. What was that song that was like popular around 2013 that was like Be the Ninja? Be the Ninja. And it was like a, a kind of pop rap song. And I feel oh, like it no mo- idea. I know how it goes. It goes. Go ninja, go ninja, go. Go yes, ninja, go ninja, yes. go ninja, go ninja. 2013, go. Vanilla Ice, Ninja Rap. That's it. Yeah. It was a big hit in 2013. So uh, in this chapter, the war has continued. Everyone's still dying. Uh, both sides are starving their citizens. And if they keep going with this war neither side will be able to retain power because they won't be able to uh, have a functional government because they've gone through all their resources uh, but there's going to be a big old fight hoping to finish the war at Fort Besselat which is once again uh, where the Benai Gesserit come from and <laughs> uh, the Order of the Southern Sky they're not doing great uh because uh, the uh, the northern sky, I guess the northern sky is doing better because everyone's like the thunder god is really good. Uh, so Duke Galtown has got the thunder god, and that's why the northern yeah the the lords are they don't they're they are uh, pushing against Duke Galtana, but they are sticking around because oh. Sidophilus Orlando right Orlando is there so they're there for him but they're not really and they're not really listening to Goltana which is a problem. Oh, okay. So he's the southern sky is Goltana. Is that right? And Yes. Oh, yes. and Larg is the know. yeah, cuz Larg is the northern sky with Yes. Okay, with Dysadarg and Zalbag. Right. A lot of dumb names with weird stuff. But you know what? This is how this type of weird fantasy stuff yeah, is. So, I, I kind of like um, it. Um can we, t- we get a scene where um, Oren, mm-hmm. who we met earlier, uh, who is Orlando's son, suggests right. that he leave, but Orlando won't because he's you know bound, whatever. He's he's sworn fealty or whatever shit, so he's there. Mm-hmm. But then Ramza shows up, and he uh, is seeking the aid of Orlando because he remembers that his father once said Orlando was his best friend. Mm-hmm. So that's it. That's what we're going on. We've got magic stones. Mm-hmm. We've got, we know that people want to kill us that have magic stones that turn them into wild monster demons. Mm-hmm. And so we don't know what to do other than go to our father's old friend. Well, Actually, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, this is like... It's a great fucking story. I mean, this is just the same way, you know, how Balky Bartokmus moved to the United States thinking, go live <laughs> yes. with cousin Larry... He uh-huh. will help you move and settle into the United States. And it's just kind of like that. Like, you know, you, you take the chance because of the family go, history. Yeah. Go go help Cousin Orlando. And do mm-hmm. you think it's Orlando or Orlando? They actually say it. And I believe it is Orlando. Or they say like or, – it's kind of like halfway between the bo- – halfway between. It's like Orlando. Orlando. Because there is Orlando. some voice acting where they say his name, and I did hear it. Yeah, I heard – they did say the family name, Bolva. Yeah. And it was – It was Bolv. As Bolv. It was bad to hear as it is to <laughs> yep. read. Like, I just – I Bolv. can't picture a worse word to make my eyes slide <laughs> off of it. You know? Like, how about the fucking Smiths? Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. I, I, at least it's. I like the names in this, even Fulmarv. Even Zolbag? The fucking Pendragons. Well, Zolbag. He's named after even everyone's Dysidard? favorite Wookiee. Also a Wookiee. Uh, on the way to Zeltenia Castle to see Orlando, mm-hmm. uh, Ramza does run across Fulmarv's daughter, mm-hmm. uh, the Templar. Melodul Tengil. Captain and Tenille. Right, guys. Yeah. Uh-huh. 
Mela Duel, who's going to end up joining the party, right? So let's remember that name. Yeah. She's I a guess, real she's Agrius. Dark, so who cares? She's got her she's, Agrius She's Agrius moveset. the worst. Yeah. That's the point. Uh, she doesn't believe us about the Lakavi. We try to convince her. Like, we didn't. She thinks we killed her brother. Mm-hmm. Uh, at Rio Vanas, mm-hmm. but we try to convince her that we did not, and we tell her the truth about the Lukavi and everything, but she does not believe. She's us, like, of course, "Oh, it's a crazy story." Oh, the Lukavi came and turned into yeah. monsters, and they killed my brother. Right? She sort of like gives that like look from that that lady from House Bunny gives like the mm, you know that look House uh, Bunny. That, wow, yeah, what a choice. From, what a choice you know, of what to reference. Uh, Paul, John loves that movie. I and do. brings it up all the fucking time. I do time. love that movie. I've never seen it. It's I fun. like Anna Ferris. I really do. I don't know why I never saw it. <clears throat> um. Anyway, we beat her, so but we don't kill her. Uh, mm-hmm. So she bails, of mm-hmm. course. And then we do run she boops into... Out of there. We do make it to Zeltenia, mm-hmm. but we don't run into Orlando. We run into Delita. Well, we Delita cool sort of runs scene. into us. Like, yeah. Ramza's praying at the empty cathedral there for forgiveness, and Delita's like, oh, strange to see a heretic praying. And they have, yeah. have us. Delita's a real dick, to be mm-hmm. honest with you. Like, his interactions with, who is he with? Is he with Alma or Avelia? He's with uh, o- Ovelia. Yeah. Where's Alma? She's Alma... still Alma napped. Yeah, because she's okay. going to be... Well, well, they, they 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 reveal what their nefarious plans with her are in like. I'll get around to that. Yeah, in like two minutes. Uh, yeah. Uh, did you find well, this cutscene? Long time in this fucking dense ass walkthrough. Do you do you find <laughs> this cutscene? There's a weird sexual tension between the two. Oh yes. I didn't feel like there was a weird sexual tension between them so much <laughs> as that the there was a sexual tension between the camera and both of them. <laughs> Kept showing those hot cakes. Oh on yeah, their we got. We haven't talked about the cakes yet, Vanessa. What do you think of Ramza's new hot cake outfit? Um, it's hard not to read that. I asked Vanessa. Cutscene says sexual. I'm not really a hot cake kind of girl for the most part. What? Um, I'm much more interested in the simmering sexual tension between Ramza and Alita. Hmm. What do you think we mean when we talk about the hotcakes? Is what I'm questioning. What you're, what you're talking about? But yeah, yeah. His his new sprite has the roundest butt. Like it's like always there, always in your face. Those two globule cakes, just big sex globes. And I'm not even. He's not my I type. Like, I don't like a 22 year old yeah. twink. Yeah, they're twinks. I feel like you could. It's impossible not to read some of these scenes as sexual because of how much butt is on display. Mm. Like it just the whole scene is it's shot sexually. Yeah, you know, it's like it's shot as softcore porn. So how can you not read it? And I'm not saying it's not there. I'm just saying it's impossible not to. I forget what because there's vibe. there's the two kinds of there's the two kinds of, of Japanese gay stuff. There's the gay stuff meant for gay men, which is like big beefy boys. That's like the Barra stuff. And then there's another word for the one like this, where it's too kind of... Ya- there's like Yahweh, right? Is yeah, that Yahweh. Yeah, Yowie. I think this is Yahweh. Yahweh. Uh, so, Vanessa, uh, what happens in the simmering tension that's, I scene? Think that's romance for girls, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, it's gay romance it's, for but it's aimed usually at women. Go, it's usually gay romance. Yeah. Yeah. What happens in Zeltana? Tania, Vanessa? It's great that I, I'm filling in the information on that as if I'm not an expert. I'm not. I don't know. I no, don't I think you're it. right. I think it's this yellow. Is, I'm not defensive. I, I think it is the case. I've seen a thing on YouTube about a yaoi cafe where girls can go and the young men who work there will pretend to be in love with each other. And like you sit down, they have Yahweh you could read and they'll come to your table and then they'll like, the one thing they seem to keep doing is like taking a stick of pokey and putting it or pocky, putting it like one end in each of their mouths and like lady and the tramp in it. And that was like their big move at this cafe. Lady and the tramp in it. Oh, oh no! Don't Lady in the Tramp anything. 
from what I understand, the idea behind Yaoi is that it allows women to explore sexuality, but in sort of like a one step removed kind of way. Uh, like mm. furry stuff, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, where you're just sort of appreciating the aesthetic and the idea of romance, but you don't have to sort of self insert. If that mm. makes sense. <laughs> uh, so, uh, um, that was what you asked me, right? You asked me for my thoughts on Yowie. No, I thought I was asking I you about your did. thoughts in, between the simmering sexual tension between Ramza and Delita uh, when they oh, meet at so the church. Delita tells Ramza what the church's plot is, and oh yeah, Delita tell yes, Delita tells Ramza what the I'm sorry. No, no, please, please do because my voice is not great. Okay. Yeah. Um, Delita tells Ramza what he's going to do, which is that he's going to kill Duke Goltana, the head of the Southern Sky. And Count Orlando as well, while another team takes out the heads of the Northern Sky. That's Zalbog and Dysodarg and whoever their other guy is. And uh, then the church takes control. That's the plan. Using the Arasite and the Legend of the Zodiac Braves, they're going to... Uh, and Delita talks like the people are clamoring for this. They don't want to hate the nobles because he hates the nobles. So he says that everybody, he thinks everybody hates the nobles. Um, the people are clamoring for this. He thinks church control is a great idea. Of course, he's a fucking idiot. And we all know that church control is somehow even worse <laughs> uh, than so church control is even worse than Lord's control. Uh And obviously what they should do is have been representative democracy, but um, Zalmor shows up mm-hmm. looking for the heretic. That's us, Ramza. Yeah, he's you uh, hear his voice shouting from outside. It's pretty fun. Uh, Delita, even though he is working for the church, kind of Chorch. helps he Chorch. Uh, <laughs> Delita helps Ramza kill kill him. He basically. Delita gets seen and is like, well, now we have to kill all of them. Yeah. And now Delita has leveled up somehow since the last time we saw him to to, to Orlando levels, which mm-hmm. is fucking annoying. Fuck you, Delita. <laughs> but it's fun fighting alongside him. Oh. Hey, buddy. Hey, uh, what? why doesn't Ramza get these sword moves? That's what aggravates me. Ramza and Delita and the gang murder all of these church people, which is I, I did like Zalmor being like, hey, Delita, what are you going to you fighting against us? You will betray the church and uh delita's like yeah i'm doing what i want yeah you're not the boss of he's me he's doing what he wants i actually kind of respect delita he's misguided here but he is at least like he's kind of doing his own thing he's trying he's he's trying to protect delita at least, or not delita he's trying to protect avelia and he is uh anyway so delita, you, you, we kill all these people and delita leaves yeah and then you get delita and his lady friend uh, I always forget her name, uh, but she's she's like part of Orlando's team, I guess. And they're, they're, she's watching him slash helping him out. And she's like, oh, yes. so you're manipulating Ramza just like everyone else. And he's like, I am not. Shut your mouth. OK, I kind of am. Ramza's my well, best he friend. Says, he's kind of like I expect he's Ramza's is doing what I expect him to do. But so he says he's not manipulating him. He's just kind of, but he is doing, he knows what he's doing. He understands what he's doing. He anticipates it. Uh, Ramza runs into a Templar named Beric Fend. Okay, let's try not doing word for word reading. You're right. Well, I wasn't word for word. <laughs> yeah, that was, very much. that was, that was right there. That Ramza was. runs into a Templar. Yeah. And, all right. Uh, Ramza, I skipped the word group and thought I was good. Oh, okay. Uh, Ramza. <laughs> Well, to be honest with you, there's a cutscene here where we see uh, the, or somewhere in here where we see moss fungus yeah. poison being used to attack one of the armies. I'm not sure which one it is. Because, uh, well, the, it's both. Is it both? Yeah. I yeah. It so it was just against one of the no, armies. No, why the, not the other both? One could, it was both. So we run to this guy and he's releasing these like particles in the air and Rams is like, hey, what's up? What are you doing? He's like, well, since I'm going to murder you, I can tell you uh, this is boss fungus and we're going to kill both sides with all this poison. 
Ah, no, they say that the poison's not going to kill them, that it's just going to render them weak. Right. Except I think it does kill them. Like, if you... No. Yeah, when you see the poison later, everyone's dead, pretty... Mm -hmm. Or, like, or or near... mm, I guess not dead, but, like, drooped on... I don't know. It seems like everyone was dead. Maybe they just fall down. Yeah. Anyway, we run into the guy who has done this, Mm -hmm. uh, a Templar named Beric Fendsor. (laughs) Is this a name we need to remember for later? I don't know. It's just fucking No, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. It was a joke. (laughs) Because there's so many names. Beric. Beric. Uh, So put that down in your notebook. And we... We we fight him, of course, like mm-hmm. we always do. Mm-hmm. I mean, what do you say? We we run into this guy, and then we kill the shit out of him. Yeah. And then there's a big sluice gate that you get to open, which is fun. Yep. Uh, this was like, a tricky these guys are like, fight. The sluice gate one is it? took me a couple of tries. Yes. You know, this is by this point, I was using, as I said, a dancer and a bard, and I really fi- I found that like, and I you can kind of I could kind of mislead them a bit, where like if I would juke my ninja on the left side people would kind of head and up a bit. People would kind of head after him and I could move everybody else right. And then it would only take the ninja like a turn to get back to the party because he had such a high movement. Right. Uh, and uh, so I was able to kind of get them all over there. So it's, it's you know, the, the, the dancer is taking their speed down and taking their attack down and taking their magic attack down. And then by the time they actually get to me and, bo- and the bard is beefing, my attack and my speed up. By the time they get to me, my people are all taking two turns. <laughs> the thing, the thing with <laughs> this is uh, smacking the shit out of them. Only the Ramtha two of them won't leave the spot they're on, which are the, the yeah, that, and that was annoying because you can try to get Ramza to run up the, or any character to run up there, but only Ramza can open the sluice gates, and you have to stand on a point where two people will basically not move. You can take advantage of that because uh, for hard fights, I always tr- turn Ramza into a monk and then like do that shock wave, and they're standing in a line, so you can get all three every time, and Ramza's doing like 200 yeah. damage, so that's pretty fun. Uh, but my problem um, was here that I had uh, I was putting my pr- a guy with white magic next to Mustadio, and I was like, okay, so he'll start. He'll use the white magic on Mustadio, and then Mustadio will use his death gun on everyone. But the problem was I should have done someone with items, and I didn't. Yeah, I didn't end up doing that in this fight. But I realized it after. You didn't have the spell. Well, no, I had the spell, but the spell has an 87% chance of of success and failed like five times in a row. So wow. I was wasting half my half my battle with two characters not in the battle and doing anything. Yeah. yeah. Uh yeah. but with that's items what, there hundred percent. The that's what makes using the dancer bard combo tough is that like having two characters who are basically not attacking or drawing fire or doing anything other than hiding in a corner is is yeah you just to have your three guys it you should probably tough, just then... stick to having one of the two but it works because like i said as long as i like i'm sl- as long as i'm slow about approaching so mm-hmm. that a couple of turns pass beforehand then by the time we get to them because i'll also use shout with ramza which is fucking great mm-hmm. oh yeah that's new for this chunker too and it does yeah, plus shout. 10 gravery uh Plus 10 gravy. Plus 10 bravery. Uh, yeah. Plus one speed, plus one attack. And you can do it over and over. Ramza is the only one you don't have to worry about maxing out his and bravery. Plus one magic attack. Oh, right. Jeez. That is so overpowered. It's so much. Yeah. And then you can have it's, your, it's a lot. your bard. Your, da- your bard's going. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's pretty neat. It's it's ridiculous. So by the time you get to the enemy, you, you've, you've plussed up like five attack. It's... So you it's open fun. these sluice gates, my new strategy, which does stop this. It, also, you can just kill everybody. Yeah, that's what gates. I did. I just <laughs> killed everyone because it might as well, and I wanted all the XP. Uh, for all the fights in the Limberry Castle, I did end up. Yeah, I did the same thing. Just killing the one guy. Yes, because I did the same thing. like they're I'm just pretty, blowing through. Yeah. Just get me to the next one. Man. I'll have Fuck to. This. <laughs> I'll have to go back and do some leveling and stuff. Well, no, probably I probably don't need to, but I just didn't get any XP other than just killing the person you had to kill I, in those fights. I hit level fifty at the end of this chunk with my last save. Oh, wow. in the chunker. I'm like forty. So I guess that's. I spent a lot of time grinding. I really okay. did. I kind of I said it last time uh, that I was on because I missed last week, but I really. 
even the even the story battles when they're like not big story battles, I will just take my sweet time and make sure everybody does something every turn. Even if I have to, even if they have to hate each other every once in a while, like everybody's doing something, and mm-hmm. I'm just collecting those fucking. Jo- I leave JP boost on for most fights. It's only the boss battles when I go in and I'm like, all right, time for double hand. <laughs> so and I, I do brawl and, and all that shit. I do need. Uh, I've been working on calculator. I I finally got it working. Working. Uh, Vanessa is my calculator. My or what's it called? Arithmetician. <laughs> Arithmetician. Uh, yeah, Vanessa. Fin- calculator was the ma- original name, right? Magic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, calculator is the original one. Uh, so Vanessa has oh, okay. got that those powers, but I just couldn't figure out how it works because I got like the first thing, but you need like two of the abilities. One yeah. is a selection, and one is a multiplication. Number? Yeah, yes, you need to, that's right. You need two abilities. I forgot about mm-hmm. that actually. You need a criteria like level, height, um, CT, you know, something like yeah. that, and something to multiply that criteria by. And, and their, their stats suck so hard. But the, the point is not to stick, although I love Vanessa's outfit in this class, the point isn't to stick in calculator forever or arithmetician. No. It's to get those skills and then go back to whatever you want to use it in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you just have to, but yes. getting. As, as a summoner or a black mage, I mean, I know summoners do less damage, but as a black mage, uh, once you've got all of that stuff filled out, you can generally find at least one that will hit most of your enemies. Same with and Bard and Dancer. Hard. Same with Bard and, and Dancer. Fast. Tell me, explain that to me. What? Bard and Dancer. Like, get those abilities. Get out of that garbage class. <laughs> uh-huh. And then Bard, you can Bard and Dance uh, from your other classes. You know what I'm saying? And you can use the Bard skills... With the air, the the arithmetic skills, so that they like no, no, they no. Always hit. What I'm saying is, uh, like with arithmetic to calculator, you can go, you can get all the bard skills and all the dancer skills, and then go to whatever class you want to have. But you still have oh, yeah, that yeah. as a secondary skill, and it's way better as a secondary still than staying as a bard because you go through. Does it work as a? Does it work as a secondary yeah. skill? Yeah. Because, you know, the monk, I wanted to use monk as secondary skill, so I got a lot of people really leveled up in monk. That works. And then I realized that, it no, you can't revive or chakra or a fucking oh, anything. Oh, with weapons or I something? I think if you have a weapon attack. Oh. Uh, yeah, I think that's what it is. Really? Because I have Ramza. Oh, no, not Ram. Oh, no, it's the other way around. I always have metal as my secondary skill. And I have, like, Van Zant has hit, like the focus and all that. I was mixing those up with martial yeah. arts. I turned my I finally turned my monk into a ninja and am building that up now. But both monk monk is even like at the end game one of the best fucking classes. Yeah. It's like so I always turn wild. Ramza back into monk so he can do maximum damage. Uh I've gotten used to samurai. Now that I have double hand his Yes, I was going to say attack it's as way a better will, with double. It's yeah, you know, his attack as a samurai is generally higher than his attack as a monk, mm. and I do like. Even though I love the monk uh, skill set, I do like the Iodo or whatever it is skill set. Yeah, samurai. some because of them Iodo are really do good. A ton of damage. Yeah, some of them are fantastic, and it's always it's it's about crowd control. Like it's you're able, you've got it. It gives him a great skill set of like crowd control, and anybody that get close gets close to him fucking dies. Mm-hmm. He's got four hand. He's got first strike, and he's got double hand, and he hits for like four hundred and fifty damage. Yeah, that's actually just and what I did with absurd. Van Zant. Was I maxed out ninja, got all the ninja stuff, and then went back. Went, now I'm in samurai, and he's dual wielding samurai swords, and he's really good. Really? Now that's and then I had kind of forgotten that ninja had double hand, and how fucking good that skill is. It's that's really crazy. good. It does two attacks every turn. So. It does two attacks every. It's turn. like in it's Final Fantasy VI. So good. Mm-hmm. All right, we are really going off the rails. Let's get back into it. We okay, can I describe the, the scene? Gates. I, I love this scene. All right, it, go for it. It is delightful because these little dioramas are so fun to look at. <laughs> yep, I love this fucking game. So uh, after you, yeah, you should definitely. Tr- I think wait for it to maybe go on sale. Uh, but I think you'd like Triangle Strategy just for the diorama stuff. But boy, yeah, I agree. I'm just boring. gonna. I need. To, I'm gonna need a break from this type of game yeah. after this. I can't do this unless we have to play uh, Disgaea. Oh God, I hope not. 
Disgaea has, I understand that the combat in Disgaea is great and people love it, but the plot is such nonsense that it, I bounce hard off of it. I could not care less about what is happening in that game. <laughs> uh, so after you uh, open up the gate, it stops the battle from happening. Uh, basically, it's flooded the battlefield. You're, it's, it's too muddy and swampy for anyone to do any real fighting. Uh, so uh, Ramza has stopped the bloodshed. But we now <laughs> cut to... Uh, well, there's a bunch of things here. First, a uh, cut to Duke Goltana. And he's like, he walks in uh, to Count Orlando. Is like, hey, Orlando, I heard you're like actually a traitor. Even though you're my best guy, I'm going to believe everything people are saying about you, that you're going to kill me. And I heard that that you're the worst uh, because Delita like fed him bad info. And he's like, so you're going to be under arrest and Delita is going to be my new bestie. And... Delita's like, oh, thank you. That's so great. I, I'm really, it's such an honor to be like uh, the leader of the Southern Sky. Hey, come here. I just want to show you something. And then Delita's like, look, look at my sword. I just want to show you my sword. And then the sprite animation here is so good. Because he like runs up to the Duke and the Duke just starts the, buttering the blood out. The fucking murder is so good. I gotta be honest with you, if if people got stabbed like this in the combat, I would like this game way more, and I like this game a lot. <laughs> like already. if they just spewed blood all over the place. Like if if it was the fatal if it was a fatal blow, if they actually ran them through and fucking shot out blood like a fu- like like that goddamn other Evil East game. Do you remember how the blood spurted like crazy in the first? That's a vagrant in the or, vagrant story. No, Vandal. Isn't that Vandal Hearts there, where the blood splurts like crazy? The economy game, Konami. It's this, yes, I'm. I'm just agreeing. This scene's fucking delightful. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. So he's like, "Thanks for the promotion, boss." And he does not say that. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't. But that would have been a great line. Uh, and then, so then, there's another guy who. <laughs> It's Consider not very... this my signing bonus. <laughs> John, have you ever finished this game before? No. Man, we're going to have a fun time talking about the end of this fucking game. Mm-hmm, I, yeah, I don't mm-hmm. know what happens at the end. but uh, so <laughs> The Rams' stuff is pretty is pretty normal, but the stuff, the post-game like story wrap-up stuff is next level. So Delita then is like, okay... Uh, he brings this guy in who looks a bit like Count Orlando, and he's like, "So, yes, um, so good. We're, we've agreed what we're gonna do here, right? Like, this is the whole scene we're gonna do is I'm gonna stab you." And the guy's like, "Yeah, you're gonna stab me, but it's for the it's for the best, and I'm gonna be a martyr." He's like, "Yep, yep." Anyway, so murder time. So he murders a fake Orlando so that he can get real Orlando out of the prison, I guess. And the guy's fine with it, which I don't like. The guy's like, yeah, kill me, daddy. Don't do not do that. Well, it's don't like, do you ever remember in the those, what's the, those books, The Hitchhiker's Guide with the pig that's like, oh, the mm-hmm. my most delicious meat is back here. <laughs> <laughs> that's late in the Hitchhiker series, I think. But that is such a delightful pull. What a great fucking concept. <laughs> How upsetting. Eat me. <laughs> Vanessa and I both agree. That pigs are delicious, but they're too smart, and we shouldn't be eating them. Yeah, but I still do. All right. Can we move on, please? <laughs> okay. The real okay. Warfare. So we were talking about, we just talked about the murder of Orlando, and here is a great scene. Uh, meanwhile, Dice Darg is like, oh, Dice Darg and Zalbeg go onto the battlefield, and they're like, wow, everyone's dead, huh? This is why I thought the poison killed people, because they said it wouldn't. But they get there, and, like, everyone's dead. And they go to they, – they're looking around. And they say, oh, oh, shit. Dice Arg's like, uh, there's Duke Larg. And Salvex like, oh, no, Duke Larg, are you okay? He's like, yeah, I'm still I'm still alive, but I'm really not doing too good. <coughs> I'm – you know, the, that poison was pretty rough. And then Salvex's like, huh, so you're saying you're alive. And he's like, yep. Yep, still alive. And then Zalek, <laughs> Dice Targ's like, how about now? And then he like, stabby, 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 stabby. <laughs> and Zalek's, Another great murder scene. Oh, good. It was so good. If, uh, uh, not Jim. Matt, sorry. 
Matt, if you like this, you should definitely watch. Oh, I think you have watched I Claudius, right? No, I have not. Oh. I listened to some of that podcast. It was very fun. I would watch. I should watch. I Claudius. It's basically I all this. I looked it this up. is I Claudius. Uh, all I this stuff. I think I found some of it on YouTube, but I think other than that, I couldn't find it. Other than maybe like buying, yeah, I bought. I, I, money on I spent twenty bu- or fifteen or twenty bucks to buy it on iTunes. Um, but I recommend that if you like this kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, he does stab Duke Larg, and then the brothers like, uh, what? We didn't talk about this. What are you doing? And he's like, don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> it's cool. just normal stabbing. Yeah, don't worry about it's, it, brother. <laughs> it's just a stabbing. <laughs> and uh, and we... Lark does say, oh, you're murdering me just like you murdered your father. And then he dies. And yeah. Yeah. That was great. Uh, so we hear that Alma is in Limberry Castle. Uh, so we head out. Um, well, Okay, I I'm, we missed it somewhere, so I want to I think so I want to say it real quick. They mentioned that um, he says Dice Darg, you Dice Sadarg, you killed your father, and he says that uh, Moss. He says he mentions. Oh, how that's Moss that's fungus... a different cutscene. This is the one on the battlefield. There's another one after that. Okay, yeah. all right, we're, we're gonna, we'll get back to that in just a second. I just noticed that we've only got like a paragraph left. So. Yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. Uh, so Alma is in Limberry Castle. We start moving towards there. There's another ghost fight. Vanessa, were you afraid of this ghost Um, fight? No, uh, because this time, unlike the first time when I thought that they were people pretending to be ghosts, but they were real ghosts, I knew that they were real ghosts. Okay, that's uh, I'm good. not afraid of a ghost that I know is a ghost, and I'm not afraid of people pretending to be ghosts. I'm only afraid of ghosts pretending mm-hmm. to be people. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, so you you uh, are heading to Limberry Castle, and yeah, it's it's right about now that we do get the the scene that Matt's talking about, where I think it's Full Marv. Full Marv, is that him? He's talking Fulmarv. to, he's talking to. Di- oh yeah, it's the peace summit. Like there's a peace summit where they're like, should we be peace? Should we be peacing? And Dice Dog's like, no, nah, I don't see why we should be peacing. He's like, yeah, that. So what does he tell him about the funny thing about those moss fungus poisons? Yeah, he tells that that it like it, it is a. He talks about how long exposure, small exposure to it, like will cause a death that looks natural. And he says, uh, but there's a tell, which is that the moss flower funguses, the mushrooms, will grow on the grave of somebody that died Mm -hmm. from moss flower fungus poisoning. And Zalbag hears that, but does not say anything. Well, I like that he's in the the corridor listening in. He's, like, by the door. Which is the second time that they've, like, panned to someone else listening and being shocked. And I love that. Oh, these... Feels very Game of Thrones, yeah. doesn't it? Doesn't it feel like tiny Game of Thrones? Yeah, it's Man, a little I'm tiny, tiny Game of Thrones, tiny I Claudius. It's great. This, it takes a little while to get going, but this game has the best plot of a Final Fantasy game. Yeah, like it's yeah. very, it's very in depth. It's very character driven, and it's very. Um, I like, wonder not if... realistic, but it's grounded. Yeah, in, uh, it's it's grounded in a way that a lot of these games are not. Mm. You where you take you walk on a stairway to heaven. I mean, I guess we're gonna do something like that eventually. But... Yeah, I feel like There's Ramza gonna... has a real motivation too. You know, it's like mm-hmm. his deal with his family and then his sister and things like that. He's a lot of Final Fantasy games. The protagonist just seems to kind of be going along. Mm-hmm. There's also a cut. Um, scene... I like. I like the the they do it a couple of times where they throughout the game where they bring up how much uh, Orlando says it where they talk about how much Ramza reminds them of his father mm-hmm. and other other people have kind of hinted that Dice Darg is bad but it's not it wasn't his father like it's it's not that they've all been bad so um, I like the idea that and and I find you know as a as a son I find the Redemption, you know, he's he's walking his father's path for to save the people and for redemption of his and honor of his name, which is it's it gets me like it's I mean, it's not. 
it gets me. It's good. It's a great, grounded, understandable story. <laughs> And this stuff that's happening now with Zalbag is great because we're seeing him now understand, like, Ramza kind of tried to tell him this mm-hmm. earlier on. Yeah. And you are seeing him now see it true, and we're going to see the fallout from that as well, which is fantastic. So so anyway. There's a lot of things going on now. There's a few cu- – like, I'm going to get a drink. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, there is a few cutaways. There's My favorite cutaway is the villain cutaway where you cut to the Lukavi. You cut to uh, Full Marv and Elmdor, and they're like, isn't it great to be a Lukavi? Oh, yeah, I've taken over this body. This body's pretty good. What do you think about your body? I love it. <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they sort of explain that they have, like, the Marquis de Elmdor is his host, and the other guy has taken over Full Marv, and that's why they're acting so different and weird. But this doesn't I seem to be this. the case with like every no buddy no who becomes a Lukavi because some of them are like oh I feel powerful and stuff they don't just appear and they're like my name's Bulbarg and I'm the Lukavi of this bar well maybe like because t- I guess all of them had to have been corrupted or something I don't know how they switch bodies do they do the does the person they switch into have to like hold the crystal in order for them to take over. I don't know. I guess so. Maybe. Or they have to, like, that's agree. that's what happened to V-Graph. Yeah, it seems like some kind of bargain has to be struck. Oh, okay. So, they, so they've taken over Elmdor, and they've taken over uh, Fulmar. I just love this cutscene, because it kind of explains how it works, and that they've... Uh, they've got this girl, and uh, the girl's going to be their ne- like they- There's another one they want to bring back, but they need a host for that who has to be a special person. And they're like, yeah, I guess it's got to be that one girl. And he's like, I don't want it yeah, to be that girl. She's interacted with the stones or something in the past and had a weird reaction. Yeah, the stone, uh, when one of them was there the stone started sparkling and he was like yeah oh i guess this means you're the one so yeah. alma is going to be the vessel for the ultimate bad guy speaking of love the fact that this game is not the protagonist is not the one yay yeah i mean it's i it's i get that they have it in there but it's nice that rams is not the chosen one he's just just there. he's just mm-hmm. the sister no, wait, the brother. I am the chosen one. He, she's just my sister. Well, remember in our prologue, it was like, Delita is the great hero, the chosen one, essentially. Uh-huh. But there's this yeah. other guy, and we're going to tell you about him. So he is. He's just kind of the other guy. Yeah. Well, Rams's story is lost to history, uh, basically, other than these papers that they find. Uh, but Delita is the story, which we don't know, but as, yeah, like you said, Delita is, in the future, Delita is the one that everybody thinks is the, the hero here. We find out why that happens by the end of the game. You know, I, you guys are just glossing over my great Olsen twins song riff. I am I missed it. the chosen one. He's just my brother. Ah. Yeah, I guess that's. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to Limberry Castle. Well, before that, we do meet Orlando, and he's like, oh, wow, you look just like your dad. Uh, yeah, it turns out that Duke Goltana was a piece of garbage. He's dead now. And I'm going to fight with you. And then Oren's like, I'm going to fight with you guys, too. And he's like, nah, you got you got other stuff to do. Uh, go do important things. I forget what he needs. He sends his son off to do something else. So Orlando... Uh, does join you, and he has a big magic ability that's a lot like Agrius's, just like eight times more powerful. It just yep. obliterates things. He is things. just Agrius, but all of his spell, all of his shit hits way, 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 way harder. I think, I don't remember what level I was, but I think when I got him, he was level 48. I, he's only like uh, his level is it's the same based, as yours because it's based on yeah because he's the same level as me he's like forty two or something but it, his hits still do like three hundred each or three twenty two to everybody and oh he's also self sufficient because he can heal himself with one of his things that you can unlock pretty quickly oh the really cheapest one in his thing by the oh, way oh yes it's a hundred job points it's at the very bottom for some reason and it 
it's that shadow blade where the, that uh, Dogface oh. had. Where he, so it hits for a little less. It only hits him for like 200, but he gets that as health. So like that guy's a tank. He I'll never has. That. Yeah. Yeah. He can just go do his own fucking thing. So he joins you, Sid Ulfus. Is he the best Sid? Vanessa. I love him. He's the best. I'm sorry. You asked Vanessa. I did. Uh, no, the best Sid is the abusive Sid from Final Fantasy VII. Uh, let me let let's just put uh, a picture of Sidolphus in. Uh, I, I let's see where's the where's the notes here. Sorry, Matt. I know you want this episode to be over, and it will be over soon. Um, here, Vanessa, I put into the notes. Uh, there is Sidolphus. He is 56 years old, which is amazing. Wow. I am almost young enough to be his son. That's great that there is a Final Fantasy dude that is far older than me. Right. Uh, he is. He is my favorite Sid, and it is mostly because... You know, I get Jim loves other Sid because, and it's mostly because he was the party member in his favorite Final Fantasy. So I guess I have to admit that that's probably why this is my favorite Sid. But you have to admit that this Holy Knight stuff is pretty fucking awesome. Also, like, unlike a lot of Sids, this Sid isn't like a drunk that made a rocket. This Sid <laughs> is a lord who followed his morals and turned against his lord because, well, no, I guess he was betrayed. I guess they arrested him. So I guess he's off scot-free. But whatever. He's like a fucking powerful lord uh, in the middle of a war that, like, is the one of the lone good guys. Yeah, he's a good guy. He's awesome. Uh, Final Fantasy VI Sid is still my favorite. Um, hmm. Banana? Old Banana. <laughs> banana Sid? Mm-hmm. Old banana, banana Sid that Sid. dies? Ban- old Banana Sid that dies. Oh, my God. The old Spoilers, dead John, banana. I know you haven't played Final Fantasy VI. Yeah. Um but this is Are you still looking something up over there? I'll fight you. No, I, I, I have put a picture of I was just teasing you. Uh in the You guys chat. want to talk about Limberry Castle? Oh give me a sec. I wanna ask what I saw about Sid. He wants to talk more about Sid. Johnny, the reason he is bringing up Sid's age is he wants to know if I would date this fifty yeah, six year old Sid. Yeah, let's what look at him. He doesn't Sid... know Matt. Well, hang on. Mm -hmm. We're talking about best SIDs, and one got left out that I would like to just mention, and then we can continue. Okay? Mm -hmm. What about Final Fantasy IX SID that turns into a little frog monster? That is pretty good. Huh? And I do like Big Bear Final Fantasy IV SID who wears a leather bodysuit. Yeah, that's true. That's good. All right. Vanessa, let's talk about- There is one more SID I'd like to talk about. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) A ranking of SIDs. Mm -hmm. I love it. It's me, Darth Sidious. No. Did you know the no. reason you can't get a date is because what about the Sid? I thought that was she in Final Fantasy fifteen. Isn't she that... Darth Sidious? Yeah, I think so. surely Palpatine sure. and yeah. Darth Sidious are, are the same person. Her for? What are you correcting me about? I just wanted to call him Sheev. That's all. I wasn't oh, correcting. Okay. It's right. like it's you Sheev. Like saying Sheev I just nothing. like saying Sheev. I'm sorry. You know who doesn't like saying sheep? Women. What about about old mechanic Sid that just always had a cigarette hanging out of his mouth in Final Fantasy XV and his hot daughter? What about that weird situation? That was a weird situation. Worst Sid. All right. I think think for my bonus episode after uh, in uh, uh, March or May, we're going to have to rank Sid's. That's going to be my bonus episode. I'm sure we've done it. I'm sure we have. No, we haven't. We're going to rank SIDs. We're going to do it. Uh, So would you date this SID, Vanessa? Well, I wouldn't say that I wouldn't date. I mean, John, that's an unfair question. That's like a 25-year age difference. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 30 almost mm-hmm. and by your own rule which you have told me before when I've been you know interested in older men you've told me that it has to be if I'm half of their age plus 7 yeah. then I can that date is, them 
That is yeah, the Sex the, and the City rule. That is not my rule. That's not, that is from fucking before Sex and the City for sure. <laughs> that's old. Um. So by that math, I could not date this Sid. Mm-hmm. He has a beard and he has like long good hair. Mm-hmm. And that's, I don't know, like... What am I? What am I supposed to be taking away from this? Is he like an old hippie guy, like one of those fifty-seven-year-olds who just like never cut his hair short? No. Or he's a lord. He's a lord of a manor, and he like he has servants. He has land. He has. I bet he has. He's land. a landed I gentry. Bet he has tea parties. Yeah, I he is he's landed gentry. Totally. Vanessa. Yeah. Of course, I would date this Sid then. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just going to assume the beard thing is just more like a sort of Viking-ish Alexander Skarsgård kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Well, and he's I guess in the, more like Stellan in the middle Sarsgaard, of a war, I mean, You know, like you got to understand when you're in a war, it's like being in the playoffs. Once you start growing that beard and you start winning some battles, you start getting superstitious. You don't want to change anything. All right. You're not going to trim that. You're not shaving. You're not trimming your face. You're not touching. You're not changing your clothes. Mm-hmm. Do you think he'll he'll trim up and change his clothes before he comes back home to me? Well, I'm just saying, yeah, sure. if you marry for him, sure. who knows what happens to people in the war? You know, sometimes they just don't come back, Vanessa. Like they have extreme sporting well, accidents? They, yeah, it's I mean, like that, but, he but might be war. when he comes back, but he'll come back and clean up before <laughs> you have, you know, you'll see him, you know, like this, just so you can get a look at him. And see how manly he is. You got to see how long his beard is. Y'all ever he read? He'll, go, he'll shower. Mm. He'll clean up. He'll put his his tux or whatever on. He'll shave that thing off. He'll trim that hair up, and he'll uh, he'll I don't know invite you to the study for chess. Y'all ever read the Odyssey? Yes. What a bunch of bullshit, read. right? <laughs> like. <laughs> Fuck Odysseus. That guy sucks. And yeah, his wife was, he was I agree. banging all the ladies and his wife was home being like, hmm, you're a rich suitor, but I'm waiting for my great husband to come back after mm-hmm. 30 years. Yeah. And then the first thing he does when he gets back, he's like, you have betrayed me. I can't believe you're so unfaithful that like you definitely there's a, been screwed there's around. A fucking rule odysseus i don't know what it is but it's got to be like the length of the marriage divided by two and then divided again by how much you actually liked them you know and then that's how many years you have to grieve before you can fucking move on Mm -hmm. and yeah if you're a man it's three months back me up here (laughs) i mean it's as long as you want it to be Mm -hmm. In conclusion, Odysseus sucks. <laughs> yeah, Odysseus, Odysseus sucks. Suck. Fuck mm-hmm. Odysseus and fuck Sid, too. Wow. Look at him. Right. He's a total freaking Look Odysseus. I don't know how you're seeing that. <laughs> I he, don't, looks like a, he looks like King Arthur. I don't know what That's Odysseus what looks, like. looks like. Greek guy? Well, I don't think he wore muscular Greek fucking guy? JRPG armor. Which, by the way, what is this? <laughs> Well, he's got his tunic. Why are, does he only have fucking leg and arm armor? You know, that's what he's most worried about. He's like, well, what would happen if I had, didn't have legs or arms? I guess he just has a red breastplate because it does look like a breastplate. Can we finish this fucking Yeah, I do please? think so, he's wearing those red pajama finish. pants with like the finish. the butt flap finish. in the back. Finish. So, oh we got like a union <laughs> suit? <laughs> Uh, so Vanessa, would you date him if those were those? <laughs> well, I mean, there are some advantages, right? Uh, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess you could do some reverse cowboy. I right. What? Yeah, well, reverse I, cowboy. I, <laughs> first of all, I do not know what that is. Uh, I have only heard it gendered in the other way although i guess i can okay, imagine but not everybody right yeah, figure it out pal. Oh, yeah. oh i see yeah you, you can things can come out the back it's fine what ew just no. point it that way it can, you could go and you could point it male or female who's not interested in reverse cow gender everyone loves Anal. reverse I mean, cow people 
<laughs> okay. Can we please finish this fucking episode. Like, of this uh, podcast? like that. Remember that guy in Grandia? He's a reverse cowboy. But so we <laughs> go to Limberry Castle. Yeah. Because we hear that Alma is there, and then uh, you I don't just know, be like that, sitting it, there. Limberry Castle is Marquis Elmore's house, I guess. <laughs> so we're gonna have to fight that motherfucker. Which we do. Mm-hmm. We fight Some through equipment. the assassins mm-hmm. uh, who they sell these turn out things. to the... be Ultima demons. By the way, these things hit so Why am I gonna fucking put on, like, a hard. Special accessory. I, I like that first uh, that fight with, where Argath is like, "Well, I'm so back," and then you're like, uh, yeah. I c- "Argath is like, I really I'm fucking it. super Saiyan now." Mm-hmm. And then we do kill him yeah. again, and he's trapping. like, "Oh, he's how can they kill me?" By the time again. I got around to hitting him, and it only took one hit. Mm-hmm. Because... Yeah, it's pretty great. <laughs> I obliterated <laughs> him, and and Mustadio uh, was shooting so at him. Good. Oh, it was great. Uh, so then we go and go inside. We fight those two ladies, and then there's this great fight where Rams is like, "Where's my sister?" And then Elmdor is like, "Oh, oh, oh. questions <laughs> are only for the victors. Uh, let's fight." That's how I ma- how I imagine him to fight to yeah. sound. Uh, Very Sephirothy mm-hmm. is what I would call that. And he does. You do have a great fight here. One thing that was annoying. I, I, I this is when I realized I have to just beeline into killing Elmdor right away because I killed Celia, and then Celia turned into another monster. And I was like, oh, well, mm-hmm. this sucks. Uh, but they turned into ultimate demons. And, and, and sucks. And uh, Elmdor just kept trying to make me into a vampire over and over again. Uh, but oh, that kind of right. turned against this him. Is the... Yes, I fucking had no control. He vampired Orlando mm-hmm. and he vampired Ramza. Yeah, and then Orlando and Ramza they just kill him. Fucking surrounded him yeah. and just vampired him. <laughs> yeah. to death. Mm-hmm. And it was hilarious. It was wonderful. Uh, I I love the little vampire icon too. It's like the Batman symbol. Is their like little speech balloon saying what their status is? And uh, yeah, they they just tore into i guess and he got turned into a vampire too so yeah uh, uh, don't even bother orlando with got, anyone in my but game, Elmdor orlando in that got fight. in my game orlando got charmed but he was already vampired mm-hmm. and i don't know what that means but it just did not stop him from <laughs> immediately going directly after elm elm Barry or whatever his fucking name is it was so funny yeah him and ramza just on both sides just just bite can you imagine they're just like just nibbling like... on him they're <laughs> ah, and then ah, he ah, dies ah. and they just stand up and they're like wiping their faces off like all right we're yeah. better yeah. and let's and let's go. we're done <laughs> and uh so they uh i get does this kill celia and letty because I didn't actually kill them. Yes, they they were ultimate demons, so they must be they die. Oh, really? Yeah, but they like die when he dies. I guess so. Uh, so then you go to the un- also. Or, uh, he has told us that Alma is not here. This was a trap. Yeah. Uh, when you get to the Undercroft, he's, you're like, so where's Alma? He's like, oh, she, yeah, she's not here. I just wanted to bring you here for funsies, and now yeah. I'll show you my true final form. This was all a trap the whole time. He turns into Zalera, the Death Seraph. What's that look like? Um, and what does that look like? It looks like he got silly teeth, and he got like a Hellboy horns that were cut off. Uh, it's let me see. Let's see. Uh, Zalera, I'm gonna Google this. Everyone, lo- cut out me googling because everyone hates it. Zalera, the Death. Oh, he's in Final Fantasy XII. Yeah, I think all of them are, pretty much. Uh, I don't have any good art for him. There's his ladies. He's there with his ladies. Uh, But I don't see any, like, sketching of him. Here, I'll I'll just uh, copy this. Bam, I got it. I beat you to it. Oh, good. All right, put it in the notes. It's it... in the chat. It's in the oh, Google Well, chat. I'm not looking at the chat. I'm looking at the notes. To me. Okay, well, that's where I put it. Here's <laughs> what he looks like to me. He looks like a naked orange man. Mm-hmm. And he is <laughs> standing so that his, like, he's sort of standing in a seated position. 
Like his yeah, his like legs his go up. Legs seem bound. Yeah, mm-hmm. his legs are tied together, and then he's at like a ninety degree angle, like he's sitting in a chair, but he's not. He's flying, uh, and then his torso is like against the top of his legs, so he's all bent over. He's hunched over. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's hunched over his legs. He has kind Big of a, hands. He's got little bat wings. Yeah, he has little bat wings. He has a scaly back. He has very large hands. He has giant hands. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Imagine so those Vanessa fingers. does find him attractive. Yeah. Oh, boy. That grosses me out. <laughs> there are and advantages I, to having long fingers. I guess what I thought were his teeth are his, like, bony whiskers. Yeah, those are his yeah, bony whiskers. they look like spikes coming out of his chin. But it does look he like does he has the Hellboy cut-off just, horns. Yeah. Or does it? Or that's not his, like his above his eyes. Yeah, I like thought those brows? were his eyes. Like he just oh, has maybe. very bulbous kind of eyes. And uh, well, I think his eyes are below the bulge, just black. Yeah, and then he has like a toothless I... old man smile. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He definitely his facial expression is one of like dumbfounded bewilderment, which is very strange. Like, and he's got one. Atta- he's got ba- well, he's got a, a regular attack, and then he's got this nightmare attack that either does sleep. Or Doom. And if he, like, he got my entire party the first time, and I died because he got my entire oh. party. Uh, he got me with Doom, but I killed him on my next turn. <laughs> sleep is exciting. worse than Doom. You can you can get by mm-hmm. if Doom happens. Just cast re-raise on mm-hmm. your guy. But sleep well, is... Well, yeah, and at least you can keep doing shit. Yeah. Like you can fucking... Sleep is the worst. Well, but you can hit... You can hit your party member to wake him up. Yeah, I just got... I everyone fell asleep right at, at the same time. I, I just I just bungled I mean, that's the first attempt. Uh, I mean that's not even your fault. It's yeah. just a nightmare. Uh, anyway, so we we Mela, Melia duel that lady that we mentioned earlier. Yeah, walks in right as this dude transforms, and it's like, oh shit, Ramza was not lying. Mm-hmm. So she joins our side, which is exciting. Mm-hmm. And then we kill this monster, and he is not easy, and he's not hard. No, he, he's a lot easier than the la- than V Graph. And yeah. she's taking care of the guys in the back, so you can just concentrate on hitting him. And the dumb demons yes. behind him don't really do anything, so just concentrate on yeah. him. Yeah, just beat him up. Yeah. Um. Anyway, we kill him, and then she asks to join the party. Yay! And she realizes that this means that her father, who I think is Fulmarov, yes, Fulmarv. is a demon as well. She realizes, basically she realizes that her dad is dead and that that thing walking around in his body is not yes. him. Yes, yes. Which is not a good thing. And I'll tell you what, I was interested in this character and I like her look. She wears like green and gold mm-hmm. and has like a hood and I think she has a Oh, great, it looks like cool white and design. blue to me. That's a joke. That's a joke. That's a the dress yeah. joke. Uh, anyway, uh, she, uh, but unfortunately, her moose set is garbage. Aww. She has all the worst powers that all these people have. So great. Oh well, yeah, her design is really cool, and I like her name, Media Duel. It does sound like she's uh, some kind of program you got in the two th- like late nineties, early two thousands that would play CDs and DVDs on your PC. You know, like, and maybe had plugins and different uh, skins you could put on it. Your different media dual player. I feel like this joke isn't working. Let's move on to next time we finish the game. All right. Well, let's talk about what we are squarely up against. Vanessa, you still mm-hmm. awake over there, bud? Mm, barely. All right. Give me a squarely against. I'm squarely against. That I have to... All right, don't drag it out for 45 minutes. Reverse cowboy Sid. <laughs> Only if you want to. Oh, Never. Okay. There's no. There's no forcing, you know. It's just that's how the union suit works. Johnny, what are you squarely against? Oh, I am... I am roundly... Sorry, I was very confused. I'm roundly for... Uh, just the, all the great, the, all the great I Claudius murders. This this chunker, so many I Claudius murders, so many twists and turns. Oh, what a wonderful time! Uh, what about you, Matthew? Um, this is where the game opens up, and we didn't talk about it uh, this time, but which I didn't realize this was the pen ultimate episode, but or I would have. We can do one more, buddy. This stuff. No, we don't. I'm not trying to push another episode out. Uh, uh, I love all of the secret characters that we'll be talking about next week that are available at this point. 
and shit's gonna get weird next week. Right, guys? God, I feel like I got a lot left to do in this game. <laughs> if it's too there much, maybe we'll make it two episodes. One chunk of content left, but I'm got I feel like I've got a hundred chunks of content left. I'm wrong. It's not a big deal. All right. Anyway, um we don't have any emails. Yeah. Can do I, we can I ask you guys to finish this up without me? I'm just not in a good spot. Oh, that's right fine. Here. Thank okay. you. Bye, Vanessa. Feel better. Bye. Bye. All right, so we have a Patreon, and right now, our Patreon is active as heck, because we got so many votes, we're doing a bracket for March Badness, although it is going to be April. It is now April. Enjoy March Badness in April. Oh, March March Badness runs into April every year. This is normal. This oh, okay. is perfectly uh, acceptable. All right, so... Uh, we're all looking forward to playing whatever terrible game you pick for us, mm -hmm. so that's exciting. It looks like Infinite Undiscovery is already out, Matt, so you dodged that bullet. Thank God. <laughs> I don't What's know the how. One? There was another one that's out that I was very Parasite excited Parasite Eve? About. That's gone. Oh, no. Parasite Eve's out? Uh, I was kind of... I thought that one would go far, man. No. No, no one likes Parasite Eve. Parasite Eve. Um... And so, yeah, for $3 a month, you get access to every single bonus episode we've ever done. And for $5 a month, guess what you get? You get to vote. And this is the year of votes where there's so many votes. And right now we're doing a bracket. So there's like four votes going on right now. Although by the time you listen to it, I think it's going to be the last, last round or two. So you, you can go choose the next game. And that's cool. Uh, thank you for the support. Uh, we also read names of Patreons. Every episode. So here is Matthew to start you off. I would like to thank Huxley Iguana, CharityWater.org, John Scalia, Arthur A., Eric Pidkami, Wah Wah Wee Wah, Anthony Cruz, Jake Dickerson, Florian Jonas Kramer, Mostly Rational Person, Christian Go, Ricky Barty, Race Jenkins, Ian Frederick, Amanda Douglas, Michael McDonough, Miguel Torres, James, Angel, Nathan Poirot, George Brady likes big boats. They cannot lie. Praise the tarnished wiener tank. <laughs> Brian Pitt and David Green. I'd like to thank David Shook, Tracy the Board Queen, Mary Queen of Scoffs, Kodad Games, Kyle, Justin Rash, Matt Newland, Mustadio, more like Mustadio. I'm Hawk's Mom, and this is my favorite podcast in Kirkwall. <laughs> well, that's pretty good. Our best and handsomest friend, Stan Ferguson. Kid A. Renee. Prince Sifuentes wants to make the world smooth. Tom, don't blame us. Blame yourself or God. Chris Ryan. Megan Sullivan. Stu Skeel. Tired of NSD's nuts. Wash in the wind. Kristen Ingram. You're right. This game does suck less the longer you play it. Rachel. Paul Birch. Andy Smith. Gage La Charité. Justin Ham. Jesse's Mom's Pizza. Cerberus Minotaur. Metal Gear Solid 2 in 2022. Oh, you don't have the right. Ooh, I like that. Fresh Eyes. Matt Jorgensen. Delita is a fuckboy. Chad Wilson. Hudson Roth, Mike Klein, Wedgecoon, Butts on Parade, Jason Timms, Jack Mazzell, Metal Gear Solid 1, 2021, Too Late, Robert M. Fart, Chief Hazard is Mustadio Bonanza, you're right, Vanessa's mom, Christopher Thompson, Farty's grandma's boy toy is Sean Gonzalez, Magpie Juju, Ross Hartley, Esteban Gonzalez, and Robert T. Fart. <laughs> Send us an email. You know our email address. It's squarerootspodcast at gmail.com. If you do not want to send us an email, but you still want to talk to us for some reason, come find us at our Facebook group, the Square Roots Podcast Group for Smart, Cool, Very Attractive People. Or we, uh, you can find us on Twitter at Square Roots Pod. Please rate and feel and subscribe on iTunes, Ghana, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks to Stephen Morris for our Square Roots theme. You can find Stephen on Twitter as Beige on Beige. And on YouTube, links in the show notes. Hey, Spotify listeners, if you want to hear episodes that aren't on Spotify, go to squareroots.libson.com or look us up on your favorite RSS feed machine. Well, thank you very much for listening, everybody, for the square for the for the Square Roots podcast. Good job. I'm Matthew Van Zant. I'm Johnny Brandon. Hi, Vanessa. Hello, Vanessa. Bye. 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 <laughs> that was dope.